Welcome to episode four of Too Long Didn't Watch. Uh, here we're going to go over exactly what happened with my players, uh, what went well, what didn't go well, or what didn't go as planned. So if you want to watch episode four in its entirety before watching this, uh, this is spoilers of that uh, episode. So we're going to jump right into it. Episode four was the uh, Green Hag episode was our big bad for this one. Uh, so we're just going to go through uh, some of the stuff that I had set up, talk a little bit about uh, some of the changes I had to make and uh, what went uh, what went wrong, because uh, that didn't go how I expected it to. Uh, so, just starting off at the beginning, uh, getting the players to roleplay a little bit. I think the beginning uh, worked well, getting the players to kind of show off uh, a little bit of the evilness. Maybe this was more neutral than evil, because uh, they, um, my players tend to be playing good characters, so that's something we need to work on. Uh, but all in all, uh, I think they did okay. So our first scene they went on is when uh, they went here to roleplay this mysterious figure in the woods. They encountered uh, a leper colony and it just gave them a chance to see if something was going to turn into combat or not and then do a little bit of roleplay. Uh, I, I talked a little bit about how they made a roll on which way to go and the when they asked for directions from the one guy they were talking to, he pointed in a random direction. This being a one-shot, whatever direction that the players chose to go, either the way the guy pointed or the way that they had originally gone on their survival check was going to get them there. If I was doing a long-term campaign, if, if they had followed, and actually in this case they did follow the way the guy pointed, that probably would have led to something else and have delayed. But since we're doing one-shot episodes, either way they went, it was going to get them where I needed them to go. So just a note for you DMs out there, you can move your locations around to wherever your players decide they're going to go. And there's nothing wrong with that. Players aren't going to know any different. So moving on from our first there, they get to the first edge of where the Green Hag Swamp is. Here is, and all my maps are uh, how we left them after play, so all the Scarecrows are gone. Uh, but the players had a chance to deal with the Scarecrows, and only uh, a couple of them were actually animated. The rest were there as decoys, and that got a little bit of combat uh, for them to wet their whistle a little bit and get the... Uh, get the combat uh, going and to learn a little bit about the water that they're dealing with. Uh, so once they uh, got the water, they uh, went over to the dock and started walking here along our dock scene. So in our dock scene, uh, this is probably where I, I had the most fun with this entire encounter, even more so than the, uh, the big bad fight. Uh, this just left a lot of uh, the players had a lot of options and if one of my players couldn't have flown indefinitely I think it would have been even more fun but I still think that added a little bit to the uh, to the uniqueness of it so first the players went through and they uh, had to deal with our first trap uh, so I used uh, from treacherous traps by Nord games their drenching pit uh, where the player fell in and I did not change much uh, on this at all. And so that DC 20 deck save for this level of characters, this was a deadly trap. So it was very difficult for them to avoid this. Uh, but getting them in there to experience what's going to happen in this trap as the water fills up from the bottom and they had to destroy the top, uh, I think that worked out pretty well to teach them, all right, here's what this trap is, here's how it works, here's what you have to do. So then we had our encounter uh, with the Dryad, the Blink Dog, and the Pixie. Again, our flying friend Zarthus and his imp uh, were able to keep a lot of the other flying creatures at bay um, as we worked here on our Swamp Bridge scene. Uh, so right there uh, is where most of this took place. Um, and again, 
Uh, all my tokens are gone because they uh, successfully defeated it. Once they dealt with that fight, uh, wasn't too bad. I think uh, our Zrul character learned that uh, he needed some ranged attacks other than a little blowgun. Uh, but if he hadn't had that blowgun, he wouldn't have been able to do much with those uh, creatures that uh, were able to fly and hover nearby. Uh, then I actually gave them a chance to rest. Um, I know when I did uh, my planning, I was going to move the rest later, but just one of those things that you just make the call as you're playing the game. I gave them the opportunity to take a short rest on a small island uh, at this point. Then we come back into it for the second encounter on the bridge. Then uh, Thruk falls into the pit and we have combat at the same time with uh, the steam methods and the magma method that came out of the pit at the same time Thruk fell in and then the fire snake that slithered up out of the swamp behind. Uh, that was... I, I'm a little torn on how this fight goes because with Thruk trapped in the bottom in that pit and the other players outside Thruk doesn't have a whole lot to do. So on his turn, he was still able to get get involved and, and work his way out of the trap pretty well, differently than Zrul did, which I, I thought was really good. But he wasn't really in the combat for, I, I think it took him three or four rounds to get out. Uh, so it took him out of the fight. But that's also what made this encounter a little bit harder. And then Zrul also had to decide, is he going to help Thruk or fight? So... I think it was a good balancing act on almost kind of splitting the party, but not really. Uh, but I, I felt a little bit that Thruk or Bo, who was playing him, was maybe a little bored because he wasn't as engaged as the other players were. So that was just something to keep an eye on with your players as you go through. And uh, if you're going to separate them like that, make sure whoever's separated um, is still getting the enjoyment out of the game that the other players are. Uh, the next part is they got back into the Swamp Edge where, uh, the Shadow Mastiffs, uh, had come and, uh, the Blink Dogs. Uh, here again, uh, the class that Manny had for his Barbarian to get those exhaustion points, that really impacted his ability to, uh, to move through this water. When I planned this, I was thinking they would spend one and at most two rounds in this water taking D6 damage, and at their level, uh, that's not insignificant. But with Manny having his character stuck at the half speed from the exhaustion points, uh, I could tell the players were stuck on what exactly to do. And so that's why I offered up, hey, Zarthus, you can fly, I'll allow you to grab uh, uh, Manny's character and drag him through the water to get him through a little quicker. If this were a long-term campaign, I would have sat and let them go, but since we're recording and putting this up for people to watch, I wanted to keep things moving a little bit, so that's uh, why I kind of nudged them in that direction. Uh, but if it was a long-term campaign where no one's watching, I probably would have sat back for a few more minutes and seen what would have happened. Uh, they got to the shore, uh, took care of the the dogs uh, that were in the mist, and then came up to Granny's house. So at Granny's house, this was not uh, not exactly what I was planning when they uh, came through here. Uh, it was nice that they were able to knock on the door because then I immediately had uh, a, a great reason for the hag to cast invisibility and for the dog to hide off in the shadows and set up an ambush so that was fantastic that as a dm that worked out for me to uh to, to get that set up and have a good reason as to why uh, so i then lured them in with the dark and was able to get the ambush with that mirror in the cloud of dagger spell uh, to hit them and that hit pretty hard and i think that scared them quite a bit but after that, it all went to went to hell for me. Uh, they managed to get Granny down, uh, get her engaged, take care of the dog, and in a long-term campaign, the hag is going to either barter for her life when she knows she's losing, or get out. And so in this case, 
again, for the premise of these episodes, the we're, we're fighting to the death. So I was going to have Granny go to a uh, secret door in the back and try and escape. And if she had successfully escaped, I would have been like, all right, long-term campaign, Hag got away, but here for the episode, we're going to say she stays and fights. Didn't even get a chance to do that. Uh, that potion of, I think it was fire giant strength, uh, and then the grappling down to the floor to keep the hag from escaping was awesome. I had I did not expect that at all, and that was great. And that uh, basically turned the fight in the favor of the players, and they were able to easily handle the hag. Uh, so kind of like the vampire, I think the hag is a better long-term opponent, opponent than a short-term opponent. Because uh, the hag is, like the vampire, is going to have things under her control. And so that was the whole premise of this, is everything the players had encountered was things the the hag had either summoned into her service or had controlled into her service. And if you can play that over several episodes and kind of keep this big bad going for a few episodes, I think that's going to be pretty good. Uh, as a one-shot, it was okay. Uh, I think it was, a, it was a little lackluster. I think the, the, the biggest piece of this adventure that was the most fun for me anyway were those encounters on the bridge with the trap. Uh, but uh, we got the uh we got to the end the players managed to uh uh i, I almost reverse do sex mocking it uh the ending with uh, the the kill everybody um at the end so we could end it uh but yeah uh, it is what it is uh, so if you have any ideas on how to better play a hag for a one shot i'd love to hear them uh because i kind of ran out of options there at the end um Obviously, I can always add things uh, that aren't uh, rules as written or in the book, uh, but uh, any, any ideas on how to use the hag as written would be great, too. So thanks for watching, and I'm excited for episode five, which is coming up next. So thanks.